Hello! In this video, we're going to be looking at computing probabilities by look using equally likely outcomes. This is something you typically see in the first couple of weeks of a finite course. I know at IU in M118, it's seen typically in week 3. This corresponds to section 2.4 in the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson. And I'm going to be looking at one of the recommended problems that one of the instructors has given us. This is a pretty standard problem. I think it's kind of fun. And let's see, which problem was that? Ah uh, yes, problem 31. So let's start by reading out the problem and we'll go from there. So the coach of gigantic state university football team must form a game plan by se selecting seven plays from his list of 14 plays. The list includes eight pass plays and six running plays. If the selection is made at random, what is the probability that the game plan will include at least two running plays and at least two pass plays? So this is this is a really fun one. I think. So let's go ahead and uh, get started by writing down everything we know. Well, we know this takes place at Gigantic State University, and we actually don't care about that part, but we do know that the coach needs to form a game plan by selecting seven plays from, from a total list of 14 plays. So seven plays from 14 plays. And uh, what else do we know? Well, we know out of these 14 plays that eight of those are pass plays, and six of those are running plays. Okay, well, I mean, that seems pretty straightforward. And what do we want to find out? Well, we want to find out what is the probability that the game plan will include at least two running plays and at least two pass plays. And the fun thing is, we're in the probability section, so and they said probability, so we know we need a probability. And the very first step when you do a probability is to find out the total number of options you have. Um, because when you have a probability, I mean, it's essentially, you know, a number on top over a number on the bottom, right? And so the first thing you want to do is figure out what that number on the bottom is. Easiest way to do it. So that would be a combination. Oh, I forgot something. What I like to do... I like to write down everything I know. We're going to do it in a nice purple. We're going to write our combination formula here. So that is C, combination of N things, take an R at a time. Wow, I just don't want my brackets to match. Equals N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. Always handy because we're going to be using this a lot, won't we? Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out the total number of things. Total options and that is the combination of 14 because he has a total of 14 plays taken seven at a time and so we plug that in that gives us 14 factorial over 14 minus 7 factorial times 7 factorial and uh, you know, I, I could break this down, I've done it in the other videos, but at this point, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and solve this, but you should be comfortable solving these kinds of things, and if you're not, check out some other videos, do some practice in the combination and permutation sections, um, but when you go ahead and solve this, you get 300, or 3,432, so that's the total number of things, useful. Okay, so, well, what do we need to know? Well, I'm not really sure actually. Let, uh, let's think about this for a second. I could figure out the total numbers. Well, when I'm not sure, I like I like to start thinking about uh, slots. So let's say, you know, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I want this to fit. <coughs> Sorry. Let's try that again. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so what kind of options do I have? Well, I could have two pass plays and the rest be running plays. Okay, well, I, I get that. Or I could have, well, this, this is going to get kind of out of hand really fast, right? So then, because then I could have three pass plays, oops, I wanted it in green, three pass plays, and, and you know, I, I'm not liking the way this is looking, because this is going to be a lot of combinations if we figure it out this way. Because, wow, this, this is getting 
kind of crazy already and we just got started so and then we got one two three four five six seven and then we've got what okay yeah this this is ridiculous and, and I'm gonna stop us right here because obviously this is not the way we want to do it we we don't want to have to figure out all these different combinations because this stuff gets crazy really fast because we don't have to figure out just these we gotta figure out the opposite where we have two running plays and you know five passing plays and, and that gets kinda crazy and that is a sneaky thing that the instructors like to do sometimes they'll give you problems where the easiest answer is to figure out what doesn't work and subtract that from the total and that will give you what does work so I'm gonna show you how to do that it's why I chose this problem because I think this is a really important concept and this is something that you're going to see a lot on the test they like to do this they like to give you something that you could kinda of brute force but it would be really nasty and uh, let's go through and, and see how we could do that so we've decided that this is definitely not the way we want to go so how could we think about this problem well we could think about this problem instead three, four, five, six. I have to count out loud to figure out how many I've got here we could think about this instead as the number of ways that this couldn't happen you know there's there's a lot fewer options where there's not at least two from each pass and running than there are you know this whole crazy combination so let's figure out what those are so first we did you know there's the situation where we have one pass and the rest are running plays right okay and then we've got the situation where there are one two three four five six seven then we've got the situation where there's you know one running play and the rest are passes well that that's easy enough whoops I wanted that to be a running play didn't I P P P and then finally we've got the situation and this is a fun one. There's only one situation where this can happen, where there are nothing but pass plays, because you know there's only six running plays they could choose from. So, you know, there's no way. You know, this is this is the fewest number of running plays, or this is the most number of running plays we can have. So, we can have. Oops, get rid of that extra arrow. Pass, pass, pass. Well, this is this is pretty manageable. There's only three situations where we don't have at least two of both, right? there's a situation where we have one pass and six runnings we have one running six passes or nothing but passes and I like that 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 I can handle so let's go ahead and figure out each of these combinations shall we and there's gonna be three pretty easy so this one at top where there's one pass and the rest are running that is going to be whoops and I like to run it in the combination shorthand but you don't have to that's gonna be where we choose one pass is that what I did on this one yes one pass and answer multiplication right and six runnings and, and that one looks really easy because that's choose six out of six and then let's see what do we have for here when we chose one running and six passes well we chose one from six and we chose six from eight we chose six okay well that's that's nice and easy and then finally we chose you know seven passing from what there's only eight total so that's choose from eight seven wow well okay so let's let's figure out our math and um, so let's actually write this down in one big formula C of a combination of eight taken one at a time and six I just want to skip my C's six taken six at a time or ors or add ands or multiplication right ands or multiplication ors or add very important to remember and six from six we're going to choose one and from eight we're gonna choose six whoops or from eight we're gonna choose seven wow 
Uh, that's not bad at all. Let's let's go ahead and do the math. So let's see. Combination 8 choose 1. So that is what? 8 factorial over 8 minus 1 factorial 1 factorial times. Well, this, this one's going to be awesome. 6 factorial over 6 minus 6 factorial 1 factorial plus let's see 6 6 minus 1 factorial and you know this should be second nature to you by now you're going to be doing this pro these kinds of problems a lot start getting used to them 8 factorial over 8 minus 6 factorial 6 factorial it just never stops it just keeps happening uh, plus 8 factorial over 8 minus 7 factorial, 7 factorial. Okay, well, that seems totally legit. Uh, let's go ahead and figure this out, and I'm, I'm going to go pretty fast here. So this is just going to be 8 times, and a uh, quick note, not really part of this chapter, but zero, 6 minus 6 is 0. 0 factorial is 1. Um, there's a lot of reasons why. Just take it as a given. Zero factorial is one. You never are going to end up with a zero on the bottom unless something goes horribly, terribly wrong. Um, and if you do, then that's a sign you, you need to back up. So this actually ends up being one. Because this should be a six factorial. That's why. And let's see, six factorial, five factorial. So this is going to be six times an 8 factorial, 8 minus 6, this is 28, and finally, this is 8, and so 8 plus 6 times 28, plus 8, and when you, when you add all those and multiply those out, you get 184. Okay, so that tells us there are 184 ways that this couldn't happen. So remember, we're actually dealing with uh, the opposite of what the question's asking right now. It was easier for us to find out the complement. Hey, that, that sounds familiar. It was easier for us to find the complement or the ways in which we could not have at least two pass and at least two running plays than it was to figure out all the different ways we could. So how do we figure, figure that out? Well, to figure out from 184, which is the number of ways we couldn't, we could take the total, which is 3,432, 3, we figured out before, and subtract from the total 184. And that will give us the number of ways that we could make this happen. And, and you'll notice it's a pretty big number. And so we're pretty glad we did it this way. It's much, much easier. Um, and so that tells us the number of ways that we could do at least two pass and at least two running plays in each of these. Well, w how does this turn into a, com a, uh, a probability? Well, probabilities are, are a fraction, right? There's always some number on top over some number on the bottom. Well, we know our number on the bottom. We figured that out before. The, the number on the bottom is the total number of options we've got here, right? And that was, uh, s so the combination of 14, 7, so 14 things taken seven at a time. And we know the top number because we just figured that out. The top number is the total number of ways that we could make this happen. And that's 3,248. And this right here, let me make that a little better line, is our answer. So let's step back, check out what we did real quick, talk about it, and hopefully it'll make some sense. So the very first thing we did, let me get to that place, is we figured out you know the answers that they gave us we wrote down everything we know so we wrote down our formula we wrote down the information we had then we figured out the number on the bottom okay we figured out the total number of options and that's what you always want to do that should be your first step for almost every single probability uh, question you see if they ask what's the probability figure out the total number of options first so that's what we did right here and we got 3,432 then we tried to figure out how to organize the problem. And, and first we tried to figure out all the different ways where this could happen. I'm going to make a check. But that was really nasty. So we chose not to do that. Then 
we went instead the way to figure out how many different ways could this not happen. There's only three different ways that you could not make a combination that has at least two pass plays or at least two running plays. So super easy. So we figured those out. We wrote them down in our combination notation. We wrote that out considering that ands are multiplication, ors are addition. Ands are multiplication, ors are addition. We plugged those into our formula. We figured out the answers for each of those. We did the math. And again, we figured out the opposite. We figured out the complement. That's what this is. So we took the total and we minus the complement from the total and we got our top answer or the number of ways in which we could make this happen and we plugged that into our probability and that was our answer. So hopefully that made some sense. Practice it. This isn't nearly as bad as it seems at first glance. Um, this is where understanding permutations, understanding combinations, really, really important. So do some practice, and I think you'll find yourself understanding it and getting it pretty fast.